So this clustering phenomenon is really uh, pretty interesting in itself. The fact that they go to these limited areas down in Mexico is pretty doggone unique. There isn't anything else that does this. And the fact that they're moving 1,500 miles from the point of origin until they get to these overwintering sites, and then they move north again in the spring, coming out of Mexico in late February and early March, uh, to start repopulating the, the areas with new butterflies as they move into Texas and into the southern states. And then the migration starts again in the north in about the 15th of August, and they start moving south, say, around Winnipeg. And they pick up butterflies as they come south. They, the, the migration doesn't start everywhere at the same time, but rather it moves progressively down the country. And if you look at it in profile from the standpoint of all of the data that we have on tagging, it looks like a standing wave. It looks like we have a migration that's very predictable. It looks like it has a beginning point at every latitude. It looks like it has a peak and it has an end. And eventually it, it, the butterflies, after being on the move for two months, uh, arrive at these overwintering sites in Mexico. So it is unlike anything else that the insect world offers, and it's unlike most other migrations in that these butterflies have to navigate across a continent. They have to navigate. That means that you've got butterflies starting in Maine that have to do something differently from the butterflies that start in Minnesota, that have to do something differently by the time the, the Maine butterflies reach Georgia and so on and so forth. And it's just so unique, and it provides so many opportunities for us to learn about how organisms use environmental information to accomplish their particular mission.